Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I have another haul to share with you, okay? I know I just did one, but I, I've hauled a lot of fragrances recently, and I didn't want to just do it all in one video because that video would be 40 minutes long because I really like to go in depth and describe my perfumes. You feel me? So here we are. So here we are, part two, and just like part one, the majority of these fragrances were actually blind buys. So four out of the seven I'm gonna be talking about. And we have a lot of hidden gems here. And oh my gosh, they're good. There's only one that I was like, meh. A lot of these perfumes are on the down low. So I'm excited to give some love to these bad boys. What to start with first? I'm gonna start off with Orientica's Oud Saffron. And if you watched my last video, you know that its sister, Amber Rouge, was a total hit for me. Like literally the best dupe to Baccarat Rouge I've ever smelled in my life. I can actually smell it on myself, not getting a latex quality. Bless. And now this is another blessing in my life. Orientica is just killing it because I am loving these dupes so much more than their originals. So this is supposed to be a dupe for Lancome's Oud Bouquet. And I'd say this is about a 95% dupe, but I 100% like this more. This is what I wanted Oud Bouquet to be. I tried the original version with like the mosaic gold bottle and it was too thick syrupy sweet to me. Like it was just too much. And in the newer version in like the glass and gold bottle, it had this strong rubbing alcohol note in there that I just couldn't shake. This is perfection. I get zero rubbing alcohol note. And yes, this has that iconic Oud Bouquet syrupy sweetness to it. However, it's not too much. It's a bit softer, but it still performs amazingly. So I love this because I think Oud Bouquet is like this close to being a masterpiece. There were just like a couple things that I wanted to change within it and this is everything I wanted it to be. It's not so overwhelming, it's just beautiful. It smells regal and rich. It's a Middle Eastern meets Western kind of perfume. Oh my gosh, it's just perfect. And same thing with like the Amber Rouge version. I have been looking for this version of a dupe for years. Everything else I've tried was either too woody or too sweet, not sweet enough. The fragrances were good, but not the perfect blend I was looking for. So you get this gorgeous, rich, potent, smooth oud, and it's sweetened up with vanilla. It has this syrupy quality, but like I said, it's not overwhelming. The saffron just adds this addictive quality. You guys, I am obsessed with saffron. When I see saffron in a fragrance, I'm like, the note just smells like magic. I, I can't even describe it. And then you get these soft Middle Eastern spices in here as well. If you like Oud Bouquet, but maybe it wasn't quite there for you, check this out. And also, regardless, if you just love Oud Bouquet, this, <laughs> this is it. In my opinion, you're getting something better at a cheaper price. The next three are Mikolev fragrances, and I bought this first one myself, and then the other two were kindly gifted to me. So, this is Mon Parfum. First of all, how cute is this bottle? They now offer 30 mil sizes of their uh, Mon Parfum range. This looks like something that would be on display in Ariel's collection of things because it just gives me this seashell vibe. It's beautiful. This smells like a mix of Mugler's Angel and Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle, but a more subdued approachable version of them. Angel has chocolate, it's much louder, has a lot going on, so if you're not a fan of Angel, I would not be scared to try this. In the opening, you get this kick that really reminds me of Coco Mademoiselle. It has this classic, timeless, chic vibe to it. The two fragrances actually both share orange flower, mandarin orange, vetiver, patchouli, vanilla, and musk. And in the dry down, while 
while still holding on to that Chanel like character, it kind of morphs into an angel flanker from the combo of patchouli, caramel, and passion fruit. This has a dominant patchouli note for sure, but it's a very likable, classy perfume. It's not a dirty patchouli at all. This could easily make a signature scent. I mean, it's literally called My Perfume. So it has this smooth caramel sweetness, a bit of dry earthiness, and a burst of passion fruit to liven it up. It's honestly the passion fruit in here that really differentiates it from those other two perfumes. Then I have the iconic, Ylang in gold. And this is their special edition bottle for 2022. So the fragrance itself is exactly the same. You're still getting that beautiful gold shimmery liquid. It's the same price. It just comes in a white lacquered bottle with hand placed 24 karat gold leaf. You guys, this is the most stunning Ylang Ylang fragrance I have ever put my nose on. So when Mikalev first reached out to me saying that I could pick a bottle of my choice, I went on a sample frenzy and I tried so many Mikalev fragrances. And I had actually already tried this years ago. I remember liking it, but not thinking it was full bottle worthy at the time. But because it had been so long and I did remember liking it, I'm like, Let's just give it another go. So I bought a five milliliter decant. And when I smelled that perfume for the second time, I was like, what was I missing? That second time around, it just perfectly hit the spot for me. So this was my absolute favorite from everything that I tried. Note Vini is still king though. That is my number one, but this is my number two. By the way, they do have a nectar version of this, which has the same exact notes. It's just supposed to be a stronger, more potent version of the original. However, I don't know if it's just me, like maybe I'm crazy, but the nectar version didn't work out for me. Unfortunately, it makes me a little bit nauseous. I just wanted to mention that in case you're wondering about my recommendation, what my preferences are. I really adore and love the original, but the nectar just didn't work out for me. I don't know what it is because even when I oversprayed this, I don't get the same experience as I did with the nectar. Anyway, this is perfection. This is marketed as a summer fragrance and absolutely does it smell like summer. However, for me personally, this is more of a springtime fragrance because it really does have a sweet, creamy quality to it. And I can't wear those types of fragrances in the high, high heat because they can get cloying. So this is absolutely stunning in warm weather. This smells like luxury. It smells like gold jewels. When you spray this on, you get this J-Lo like glow to your skin. I imagine this is what models during a photo shoot in like Bali or something smell like. They're all bronzed and glowing and shimmering and wet. Mm. Their hair is perfect, voluminous, shining, flowing. The ingredients smell so high quality and natural. You get a slightly milky vanilla, a sweet ripe coconut, of course, the tropical ylang ylang that adds just like a touch of a banana-like quality. It has a bit of woodiness from the sandalwood. You get an array of other fruits. Oh my word, it smells like a slice out of heaven. I'm not kidding. This is what I imagine heaven to smell like. Like I can picture the white clouds and just the rays of sun beaming through or pixie dust. This smells like a feminine bombshell. If you have not smelled this before, girl, you need to experience this. They also sent me a 10 milliliter travel spray of Delice, which I also picked out and I am in trouble because I want a bottle. <laughs> this is 
hands down my favorite from the Secrets of Love collection. I've tried them all except for Gourmet. In the opening, this smells like wine to me. It has to be from the plum. It has this delicious boozy quality to it, not anything too alcoholic sweetened with a touch of an ambery colored vanilla. And although it has a slight darkness to it, it also comes across very fresh. I love the bit of spiciness that it has from the nutmeg, bay leaf, and cinnamon. It has this fresh, crisp, slightly green hint. It's like walking into a garden with some roses. It's not strictly a rose garden. And by the way, if you don't like cinnamon, don't be scared because it's not like you just shoved your nose with cinnamon and now you're coughing. It's very smooth. It has a bit of zestiness to it from the orange in the opening. And there's oud in here, but I don't get oud per se. I just get this beautiful, deep, rich, woody note. I'll also say that the time and occasion that you'd wear this perfume would be the same times you'd pick up Tom Ford's Jasmine Rouge or Parfum de Marly Meliora. It smells classy, grown up, feminine. It could be worn in a lot of different situations. Could totally be a signature scent. I'll be wearing this all year round. So the picture I'm painting for you is you are walking through a royal garden in a deep red dress drinking wine. You're walking through and taking in the wood of the trees, the green of the leaves, the petals of the roses, the sweetness of the fruit, and it's starting to get dark out. This has moderate performance, and I will say this is the most bougie travel spray I have ever owned. This literally, like, weighs pretty much as much as a full bottle. And you can choose from either black or gold, and they now carry these on their website uh, for a bunch of their fragrances. So if you wanna test any out, if you wanna travel spray from any of the Mikalef fragrances, check it out. Thank you so much to Mikalef for sending these over. I'm so grateful and I love them so much. Next one is Valentino Valentina Mur Assoluto. And I picked this up because I saw this on Sniff with Steph's channel. I saw this gorgeous bottle. I really love the color. So I did a little digging. The notes looked incredible, like a bit of me, and it just had rave reviews. This is a discontinued perfume. It's kind of hard to get your hands on, and I could not find a sample anywhere. So when I found it, I just took the plunge, and oh my gosh, I adore Adore it. This was such a successful blind buy. If you love your sweet, creamy vanilla fragrances, you will love this. If you like uh, vanilla woods from The Seven Virtues, silky woods from Goldfield and Banks, and or absolute aphrodisiac from Initio, I really think you will like this perfume. It does not smell like those at all. I just think that if you like any of those, that more than likely you will like this. I was expecting this to be a lot more dark and unisex than it is, um, although if a man did wear this, he would smell absolutely scrumptious. I get vanilla, myrrh, and ylang, ylang That's it. To me, vanilla is the main player, and then I get a likable, sweet, balsamic myrrh, and a creamy, happy, tropical ylang, ylang. But this does not smell tropical at all. It just has that, tropical floral added in here, but this is absolutely a fall winter fragrance. It's a bit powdery. I literally get no leather, musk, or jasmine. This is super cozy and cuddly. You wear this around your date and they will be drooling all over you. It literally smells like an expensive vanilla dessert. It's so warm and inviting. I Love this so much. Also, performance is incredible. I literally sprayed this a couple times and I could still smell it the next morning when I woke up. This next one, I'm about to blow your socks off. Uh, the Perfume Nest, or Chris, here on YouTube, posted a picture featuring this fragrance on her Instagram. 
I read the notes and I just about died. This is Genre Parfum Apple and Aces and this is actually a niche indie house based in Louisiana and they sell their fragrances on Etsy. So I bought a sample and when I tell you I bought a full bottle hours into wearing that fragrance. This is the best apple centered fragrance I have ever smelled. You get like the most realistic, juicy red apple. This runs laps miles around Kaoli's Eden Juicy Apple. They have absolutely nothing to do with each other, but if you are looking for an apple centric fragrance, this is a home run. It's incredibly mouthwatering. You get this boozy quality from the wine, rum, and cognac, but if you are not into really boozy fragrances, like do not be afraid of this. This is not scream like strongly alcoholic. I get a bit of tobacco, amber, saffron to give it this unique addictive twist. Like you guys can see <laughs> from the notes like, oh yeah, that's Anna. White musk, some vanilla, Oh my gosh, this is so underrated. I think this is totally safe for anyone and everyone to try. I genuinely think everyone will love this. Looking at the notes, you could think this would be heavy, strong, masculine, but no, it's very smooth, perfectly unisex. Performance is moderate. I can definitely overspray with this one. And the scent bubble that this creates is un real. Just wow. I have been looking for an apple fragrance like this my entire life and everything has been like too sweet or too gourmand. This is perfection. I'm going to be wearing the absolute shit out of this. I'm going to be layering it with absolutely everything. And on top of it all, it's super affordable. It's 50 bucks for 50 milliliter bottle. It's absolutely stunning, please check this out. And this last one that I picked up is also a cheapie. I believe it was like $23 for a 125 milliliter bottle. This is Elizabeth Arden's Fifth Avenue Royale. This is a like, not a love. There's a little bit of a dirty animalic vibe to it coming from the patchouli in the opening. Not to the point where I feel the fragrance smells bad, but I'd rather that not be there. I'd rate it a 6.5. I do appreciate that it's different from your typical cheapy. I imagine this to be New York at night. It's crowded, you're getting a mix of people's fragrances that they chose for the night out. The street is kind of dirty. <laughs> like a rich auntie that's obsessed with animal print. This is city nightlife. I don't know, it kind of smells like money, but it also smells kind of trashy. You get a liquor note, people have been drinking, suede, woodiness, a touch of fruitiness. It's the raspberry that keeps pulling me in. It's really juicy. It's soft in comparison to the other notes, so it's intriguing to get whiffs of it. I also get a little bit of a green quality from the Cipriol oil, a bit of dark amber, and although it's not listed, I do detect a little bit of oud. It does have pretty poor performance. Um, I oversprayed like crazy with this, and after about like an hour or two, it became a skin scent. So although it's a good scent, it's not wow factor and it just doesn't feel like me. It feels like I'm wearing someone else's perfume, you know? So that was my haul. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.